morning guys, welcome back to Bearham Engines. So first things first this morning, I'm just heading off to Tom Upton's uh, with the Cosmo cylinder head. Now this has come from, I think this cylinder head's come from a guy in Ireland. Um, first thing I've done is measure the depth and we're down about about 50 thou on the depth so it's had about 50 thou skimmed off the face at some point but it's um, it's quite corroded around the waterways so I'm gonna give it to Tom he's gonna carve that out weld it all up um, we're obviously gonna have to cut the seats back on the head once it's all done um, so we can face it without it sort of chomping into the seats and then on this particular head we're gonna to have to go for a cometic gasket because they go up to about two and a half mil. So I would have thought by the time we've finished, it's gonna have about 60 thou off. So two and a half mil gasket or should in theory take it back to pretty much standard. But that's the only option we've got on this. We've got a couple of bolts to drill out and what have you. So we're gonna do that. We'll get back to the workshop and, uh, and see what's going on. But yeah, today guys, what I'm gonna do, because obviously in the last video, um, many of you guys commented regarding the BMW engine that we got in bits. Um, it was a bit, I suppose my explanation on our theory as to what happened was a little bit vague. So we're just gonna go into a little bit more depth really as to show you why we thought that happened, you know, the difference between detonation. We'll see what's happening back there. Right guys, so the BMW engine, we got the pistons down here. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's in order, front of the engine over here. So what have we found? So you can see here, first of all, the crown of the piston, bit black, looks a little bit over fuely there. Um, as you run into the middle, you see the two center ones look a little bit lighter brown. So I suspect that they've been running a bit weak. You can obviously see blatant detonation. Because of the detonation, you see on the side of the piston there, um, you see that has been burning away. So that has been getting quite warm there on the top. Now, a few of you guys did comment on the pistons hitting the cylinder head, and we'll come to that in a moment. Now, when we built this, we do every measurement um, and make sure everything is cock on. We don't take anything for granted and we, don't, we certainly don't take chances on things. So I had to face the block very slightly. Now these piston crowns sit very, very slightly below the surface of the block, whereas the original pistons, um, similar design, the outer sits flush with the block, okay, to start with. These sit about four or five thou below the surface of the block, okay? So the head gasket thickness, standard, we're at 0.7 mil, um, whereas we're using a one mil head gasket, okay? So we've got about a millimeter of clearance, okay? So there's no way really that that piston should be able to hit the head. So the bearings, if you have a little look, the bearings have been wearing very unusually. Now we know that detonation can cause very strange crank journal bearing wear on the, on the com rods and that seems to be what it's doing. Um, so I did say to you that it's been running on the, it's been rubbing against the, the oil jet which was obviously very close to these rods um, but it does appear that the rod has been moving side to side. Now that's almost certainly down to detonation. Because of the extra heat in these pistons, the, the skirt, obviously you've got the running clearance is measured here, probably about 10 mil up from the very bottom of the piston. So that there is what touches your bore and that is where you determine your running clearance, okay? So these pistons here are 87 and a half. Um, 87 and a half is what you bore it to and the piston skirt here will be less the running clearance. So these particular pistons will probably run about two and a half thou, I think, I can't remember now. Um, but we are now down to, on the worst ones, we are down here, bearing in mind these skirts have not worn, they've just hammered because of the detonation. We're down to about six or seven thou of running clearance down here. So that, what that's gonna do is allow, it's gonna misshape the piston and it's gonna allow the piston to rock. And that's probably, 
I mean, I don't know whether the engine's been over revved, but that is probably why the piston has hit the cylinder head, if it has, okay? Um, also, you can tell by the, the rock on the com rod from side to side, the lateral rock, you can tell by the wear on the bearing. So you've got a nice clear bit in the center and either side of that bearing is where it's been excessively rubbing on the crank journal. And it's apparent on most of them, if you can see. So although crank failure is not the problem of this engine, but that is certainly gonna wear excessively quick um, with the detonation on it. Now, although this engine has been detonating and the two center ones look a bit lighter than the outer ones, that could be, in my eyes, that could be down to the injectors. So these injectors were not checked and you could have the center ones with a bit of an issue, not giving out as much fuel as the other ones or a different spray pattern or something. And that is probably why when it was mapped, not might not be anything necessarily wrong with the fuel map on the vehicle, but it's certainly going to be running leaner on those centre two, which are the ones that evidently have been suffering more with detonation than the others. That may be a reason. The ignition map could cause the detonation. It could be, you know, to squeeze that power out of it because 380 horsepower is pretty good for one of these. They could have advanced the ignition. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, the Octane could have something to do with it. Now standard, these are 11.3 to one compression ratio. These pistons are a 12.5, um, but we are running a slightly thicker head gasket, so it's gonna be slightly down. So I would say with the skimming of the head that it's had done, you're gonna be running about 12.3. Um, compression ratio. So with super unleaded, these should be absolutely fine providing it's mapped okay. But that's, we're assuming now that the fuel system's okay on it. Uh, so that's another reason. But if we come to the reason that this engine has terminated and it's down to this, this part here. Now, bearing in mind, we haven't seen it, but this particular piston on number three, um, when they took the head off or took the plugs out, the, that number three plug was melted. Um, so the melted plug along with this chunk out the piston here, I am determining that the reason this engine has blown up is through pre-ignition. Now pre-ignition ain't quite the same as detonation. Pre-ignition is exactly what it says. It's pre-igniting the mixture before the ignition process has even started. So because maybe of the detonation, detonation can cause pre-ignition. So because of the detonation, it's getting incredibly hot. It burns the porcelain in the plug to a point where it acts as a glow plug. And it can happen as far as when the piston comes just off bottom dead center, um, it could ignite that fuel and air. And by the time the piston gets to the top, it's very quick. I mean, detonation, you can have pretty bad detonation. It can go on for some time. But pre-ignition is almost instant, really. What's happened is it's pre-ignited and it's just burnt a chunk out the side of that piston. So that is the reason this engine is apart. Right, so the VR6 engine, Paul has had, had the gauge on this today. We filled it with running in oil and we've turned it over with our big drill, which turns it over only in fairness at about 300 RPM. And this thing's fetching near enough five bar of oil pressure. So that is more than adequate. I expect on five bar, the all pressure relief valve will open. Um, so at that, that speed, it's absolutely perfect. Um, I would have thought this one, I think on with hot oil, this one on idle would be about three bar. So that's absolutely fine, no worries there. Um, we're just gonna do the same on the CVH because these two friends here are gonna be picking these up in a couple of weeks on a Saturday. Um, I've been speaking to Stephen this morning. He's gonna bring in the rocker cover which he's had all painted and he's got our name in the top there. So that's gonna look really good. We'll get that on video when it turns up. I hope they're happy with it. And it'd be interesting to see what these two engines are like when they're back in the vehicle and, and tuned up correctly, emphasized correctly. <laughs> so this cross flow here, you see all the pistons and rods laid out. Um, Paul's done his measurement and weighing, etc. cetera. Um, the only thing we did do yesterday, cause he's got the crank in it. We did a, a little dummy build, put a piston and rod down the hole and we've got about five thou of protrusion of the piston. So all I've done is I've put these in the lathe, took the five thou off so they're nice and flush. Um, Paul's re-weighed them and um, they're all good. So this thing is ready to be assembled, which he's gonna do this afternoon. Um, so we've just had 
another engine turn up. So as you can see, it's all looking like absolute new. Looks beautiful. Um, and apparently the customer has had all this vapor blasted. So um, he's gonna need some thorough cleaning, but it does look absolutely fantastic. All we've got to do is do the machining on it, um, go through the heads and that. But yeah, really, really pleased with the look of that. I guess you're wondering where our vapor blaster is, guys. Um, the deal is with it that we've got to get a forklift on order, but we need to hear back from the company we bought it off, Vixen, as to when they're going to um, deliver it. Otherwise, I'm not going to know when I need to book a forklift for. So that's where we are with the vapor blaster, guys. But yeah, looking at that, really looking forward to getting that. That's why we sort of come to the conclusion that we did. I'd say you've got more of an issue on these center ones than the others. With the unusual wear of the bearings, obviously the movement of the, the com rods because of the lateral movement, um, along with the detonation that's obviously visible, and then you've got the pre-ignition on number three there, I would say that you know it's been detonating and that's probably what's caused it, but the ultimate finale is the pre-ignition on number three, really. Don't know about the crank. Also, one other thing, what can cause um, the detonation or what, what gives a good determination that it is detonation um, is I did see the blocks. I popped down to the garage that stripped the motor and I had a quick look in the bores, didn't measure them, but a good telltale sign that it is detonating and the piston is getting hot because obviously it's hammered the pistons um, and it, is, it has actually wiped one of them. Yeah, this one here, number four, it has actually wiped. But down the bores, um, particularly the center two, you get where, if you look down, you say you've got the thrust side here. If you got where in the bore on these four corners here, because these are gonna be the corners that are less structural um, and they sort of more likely to expand. Usually a telltale sign in the bore, if you've got sort of lines on the diagonal there, four of them, that means that it's been detonated and that piston's got hot. So that could be the cause of um, the piston distorting, wiping the piston, um, the lateral movement of the piston now, because it's obviously misshapen. Um, and that could be why the rod's rocking. So yeah, number of factors on this one, guys, but let me know in the comments what you think. Feel free to um, put down there whether you think that I'm wrong or right, but that is my determination of it all. Um, just a little bit of a, educational one really people tend to forget really if if you're in a standard engine if you go by all the measurements as in engineering terms on a standard engine you you're sort of more than safe you know you can get away with lower octane there's more clearance between the head and the pistons um the the compression's lower blah de blah and obviously the map you can get away with more in the map really but when you start squeezing power especially out of these normal aspirated you're pushing the boundaries if you have got an injector issue on one, I mean, if I was a tuner, which I'm not, the first thing I'd be doing is either putting new injectors in or getting the ones I've got tested to make sure that it is at least fueling correctly on all six because you can map it and it can, you know, seem absolutely right, but you might have one or two that are down. So that's just what I would do. Uh, so yeah. As I say, if you're squeeze, you get all the power out of them, but you're just pushing the boundaries. And, and sometimes, you know, a bit of ignition here, a bit less fuel, you get more power, but the reliability is not there. So you're right on the right on the fine line of it, really. And that's the problem we get. So obviously a lot of tuners, it would be, you know, your engine's making a noise. You want to go back to the engine builder, mate, but not necessarily. There can be a load of factors that... Um, that build up to a catastrophe like this. So you can see the predicament we're in as engine builders here, or an engine building company. This is usually with things like, especially on the competition stuff, is usually the first thing that happens. The engine comes back here. Uh, we have to go through all the processes, which can be costly, timely, all the rest of it. We don't like to point the finger, but at the end of the day, we have to sort of get to the bottom of it, spend the time, and someone's got to pay for it. And um, it can't always be us. So yeah, let me know what you think on that, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. Remember to comment down below on, um, on what you feel about today's video and our theory on why the BMW is now in bits. Um, but until another video, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you then. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.